Good evening, everyone, and happy Tuesday. As promised, we're going on a trip this evening, so let's get to it. Did you all enjoy yesterday's workout? If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you have three more opportunities to join us for Lift It, a fitness program designed for our Wheeler family each Monday at noon with Chandra Barnett and Marnie Robinson on all of our streaming platforms. Don't miss out on this opportunity to lift your spirit and some weights on our journey to better health. As I mentioned to you last week, this year's national theme for Black History Month is Black Health and Wellness. Last week, we heard from the amazing Dr. Baxter Montgomery as he shared some of the ways that we can heal our bodies and reverse illnesses with the foods that we eat. This week, we will continue to focus on various aspects of Black health and wellness in our series called Vitamins, Veggies, and Vacations. The Third World community has unfortunately been known as a food desert. This means that there is limited access to affordable and nutritious foods, including quality supermarkets. In recent years, we have seen a rise in Black-owned vegan restaurants in our community. Tonight, we're going out for dinner as we discuss the vegan and vegetarian options that are available right in our neighborhood. That's right, we're heading over to Sunshine's Health Food Store and Deli. Many of us are familiar with Sunshine's as they help us tremendously during the Daniel Fast when we don't feel like cooking. Well, now we get to meet the woman behind it all, Chef Arga Bourgeois. Thank you so much for sitting with us this evening. How are you? I'm a fabulous. Good, good. Well, let's get into the fabulous history of Sunshines because, you know, you've been in this location for a few years, but this restaurant and the store have been open for well, almost 40 years now, since 1983. So talk to us about that. How did it all begin? Well, you know, everything happens for a reason. Uh, my grandmother got sick from diabetes. Mm -hmm. And when she um, sick, got sick and passed away from diabetes, my dad was like, we need to see ask God, why do people suffer and die? And I'm like, oh no, you can't ask God anything. You got something gonna happen to you. But later in life, I realized his question was, why do people suffer before they die? It's not the dying part, it's the suffering. So through his trial, his error, his praying, he ran into people about fasting, detoxing, cleansing. And so he was his own guinea pig. You know, at the time, uh, my daddy was in his 40s. He had the typical black man's disease. He had high blood pressure, um, borderline diabetes. He was overweight. He liked to drink and party and enjoy life, you know, like most people. So um, he did his first cleanse, detox, got off his blood pressure medicine, lost 30 pounds. Wow. Diabetes, no um, insulin or anything like that. And so guess who his first guinea pig was? Me. You. <laughs> <laughs> so I was 10, 12 years old and um, we just did trial and error, yeah. you know, with the family. Nice, so was it difficult get the, jumping straight into that after, you know, the death of your grandmother and everything? Absolutely. For for him, um, it was more of a healing process. For me, I was like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? Because my dad's from Louisiana. We ate crawfish, etouffee, yeah. boiled crabs, and you fish were young. Yes. I was like, this was a total culture shock. So um, I fought it, you know, like any other teenager would. But I did leave dairy out of my diet because I saw the instant relief from no dairy in my diet. Well, you're one of the first health food stores um, serving raw and cooked vegetarian dishes in the city of Houston. And that's pretty cool. So, you know, what kind of research outside of, you know, of course, making those changes, no dairy and going straight to vegetables, but what other kind of research goes into staying on top of the latest health trends now? Wow, okay, so basically you have to go against the grain. Sometimes the news, the media can kind of get you off track or off focus so like now everybody wants to be vegan or vegetarian but they incorporate so many byproducts like the fake meats the mock this the mock chicken the mock beef you know most people won't say this but if you want some chicken eat some chicken don't surge to all those mock products because they're man-made if yeah. you will and 
I'm just really old school. Who's to say that man was having a good day? You know, it's coming from a factory or a plant. So if you choose to be vegan or vegetarian, use those as transitional foods. Don't c consider doing those all day, every day. Stay with your green, roughage, healthier products. Um, I use the motto, when it comes from the ground, it's God's food. When you bag it, bottle it, or label it, it's man's food. Who's to say that man is having a good day? Wow, I like that. Yeah. Well, you are a health and wellness speaker and your business has provided free classes to the community through the years on various health and wellness um, topics, including vegetarian cooking. So how has all of that evolved considering where we are now? Well, when we first started out, we were the weird people, you know, oh, here he goes, uh, we, we need some meat, you know, and we did this for many years, many moons, and then 2015 came around. And it's like cool to eat healthy. So we were ahead of the trend, but really just ahead to help people have options. So in this day and age, um, people want it. And what's so crazy is we can't give it to it because of COVID. Yeah. So have you transitioned to Zoom or has it just stopped completely until further notice? We do have um, Zoom classes on Saturday mornings uh, where we teach it and um, that's but it's just so different yeah. um, because my dad and I we're both touchy-feely people and we like hands-on I mean it's great to look in a book but um, we're more um, mix it up taste it yeah mix it up taste I can't give you a half a cup a half an ounce because produce varies so sometimes you might need more garlic or more of this yeah so you also have said that those providing those classes in the past was part of your social responsibility. What what is your social responsibility to the Houston community? An option besides fried chicken and fried shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds so basic, but we perish because of lack of options and 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 knowledge. You know. I live in a community and so a lot of times I'm at home, I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry and there's no options. So even though you know you don't need fried chicken three days in a row, you end up eating fried chicken three days in a row because if you can drive two minutes to eat compared to 20 minutes, that's a big difference. Yeah. You know, so I feel it's my responsibility to give back to people and help them because Really, they helped me. So you are also a raw food chef. Um, what would you say are some of the biggest benefits to eating raw? Because we all know vegetables are good, but do we really cook the nutrients out of our vegetables? I think so. I think that once you cook it, you cook the nutrients out of it. Um, eating raw has so many benefits, uh, weight loss. Um, but I have to tell you, I'm still working on that challenge because I'm, okay. I'm not, <laughs> I'm a little bit overweight because I love to eat. But I notice when I'm doing more raw foods, I'm lighter. Um, when you eat, your body has to break those foods down. So have you ever eaten a really heavy meal and after that you're like, oh, I'm sleepy. Mm -hmm. Food should give you energy to do work not make you totally decapica decapitated and want to take a nap. So I know it has a lot of benefits and I see it in my skin because I do raw twice a day. And I really need to change that up because I eat cook in the evening. But I know that if I could be disciplined enough and eat cook for lunch and eat the raw at dinner, I would see way more benefits. Well, a lot of times when we hear, when a lot of people hear the words vegan food, it kind of, you know, scares them. But I think it's amazing that so many of your customers are not vegan or vegetarian. They just love the food. What do you attribute the Sunshine's experience, the love of the Sunshine experience to? So our goal and objective is to reach the mass amount of people. And the majority of us are used to eating mac and cheese, oxtails, all that heavily seasoned food. So our goal is to introduce you to an option, a healthier option that's soulfully seasoned. And over time, it will assist you to make better choices. You know, there are some perfect people who can jump into the vegan world, but I wasn't one of them. So I understand that you miss that. But if I can offer you something that's really good and tasty, if three days out of the week you'll eat it, or even one day out of the week you eat it, that's better than nothing. What have been some of the highlights of carrying on your father's legacy of sunshine? Ooh, um, trying to stand up in his shoes has been a really hard thing because he raised the bar so high and I'm still trying to obtain that. 
one of the biggest challenges has been to expand and change. Meaning a lot of things that we started doing, um, give you an example, when we first transitioned to eating healthy, we did a lot of soy and we did a lot of tofu. Well, research has shown that soy and tofu is not good for, um, if you will, for men and their prostate and so forth. So we had to change that. You know, so it's constantly evolving, constantly seeing what's new and trying it on ourselves before we try it on other people. Nice. Well, speaking of trying, I hear you've prepared a dish, one of my favorites, the mixed kale and cabbage salad. So we're going to go take a look and hear a little bit about that. Thank you so Great. much for the conversation. Thanks. All right, everybody, we're back. And as you can see, I'm here with Chef Arga and she is about to prepare for us the famous mixed kale and cabbage salad. We have all the ingredients here, so take it away. Right, so when you're thinking about eating healthy, don't overthink it. Our base today is gonna be mixed kale, okay? So I've already cut the mixed kale up finely. And then I have some cabbage. Um, use whatever you have. This is about a fourth of uh, a head of cabbage. So we're just gonna use a little bit on there. Then um, I shredded some carrots. Um, just sh put a few carrots on there. A lot of times you change up the vegetables because one is crunchy, one is a little soft. You know, give it a little love mm. um, so it'll be awesome. <laughs> then we have cucumbers. Um, I diced them finely. I like cucumbers, I just don't like chewing on them for 45 minutes. So yeah. I try to dice them up really fine. Um, if you want, you can always add avocados to this. Um, you can also add red bell peppers, but we're not doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> so then the next thing that we have is sesame oil. Um, sesame oil will be our base for this. So we're going to take the sesame oil and add it with the vegan A's. So um, vegan A's is a non-dairy mayonnaise. Um, I like to mix the two together because I want my salad, I don't just want it good, I want it slamming. So a lot of times when you get salads, one part is in another part, so we're gonna mix it all up. And then this is liquid aminos that we mix. Now what is that? Because I've heard a lot of vegan recipes have called for liquid aminos. What is it? Uh, liquid aminos is a natural seasoning. It does have your salt tasty taste, but it doesn't have the high sodium count. Okay. So it's a way to season your food without having all that salt, um, which is what's in everything, that yeah. and sugar. So we're trying to bypass it by using the, the Bragg's liquid aminos. So is it similar to like a soy sauce or? Yes, okay. but not so tangy on the end, okay. if you will, because you know, soy sauce is good, but sometimes it can be salty and tangy yes. at the end. So this is just, um, it gives it the salt flavor, but not the over, overpowering yeah. taste, if you will. Gotcha. So then the next thing we're gonna add is lemons. Um, I, you can do one or two things. You can have a lemon squeezer, or you can act like you're from the country like me and just catch the seeds in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it works just as fine. And um, I'm gonna add just a little bit more lemon on this. So with this, you just eyeball it. Well, um, this recipe, I kind of broke it down uh, for you. It's a tablespoon of, a heaping tablespoon of vegan A's. Um, I only use uh, maybe about a tablespoon of liquid aminos and two lemons, because lemon gives it that tang. Um, so we want the tang and the oil kind of sauce to it. Now here's a trick that I like to use. I'll share it with you. So in your salad dressing, because remember I told you I don't like to chew the cucumbers for 45 minutes, I add the cucumbers to my mix because I want to kind of marinate them, you know, just a tad bit. Mm -hmm. So I add it to them and then we're gonna mix all of this up before we pour it on there. And you don't have to do a lot of mixing because it's gonna you're gonna toss it again on the salad. We just want the liquid aminos to mix in with the, um, with the, oils and with the cucumbers, and then I like to marinate my cucumbers. So, in a perfect world, which none of us live in, oh my goodness, Okay. <laughs> in a perfect world, which all of us, nobody lives in, we're just gonna pour the salad dressing over. Now, you know, I already told you, my family is from Louisiana, so we like a lot of sauce, a lot of juice, a <laughs> lot of gravy. And you see how that looks delicious. Yes. And we just spin it over. You see the the kale is changing colors because it's perfect and ready. <laughs> I 
I didn't bring a fork over here, but would you like to try some? I would. I have a question though. How did you come up with this recipe? Because sesame oil and vegan aids and like, where, where did that come from? Did I tell you I was greedy? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I saw other recipes and a lot of recipes would call for regular mayonnaise. Okay. okay? So what, when we when we first were introduced to, man, to this vegan aids, because I love mayonnaise, I love Miracle Whip, I was like, ooh, this stuff is good. So I would try it with uh, sesame oil, I would try it with, um, I try not to use a lot of vegetable oil, but sesame oil just became my go-to thing, the two mixes together. I saw a recipe um, a long time ago where they use mayonnaise, milk, and um, oil to make salad dressing in a blender with cucumbers. I was like, ooh. What if I use some sesame oil? And sesame oil is affordable. According yeah. to all the other oils, you have avocado oils, you have a lot of oils, but the price point isn't affordable. And for me, trying to eat healthy, I don't want to be broke, but I do want to be greedy and happy. So <laughs> the sesame oil works good for me. It's good to be greedy when you're eating <laughs> kale. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's let's get some forks out and taste it. Okay, okay. All right, so this is the mixed kale salad. Um, I tell people all the time, when you're eating healthy, just let your taste buds flow okay. and try it out. Um, you can add avocados to this. You can um, add arugula to it. That's my other favorite. Like so taste it and tell me how those okay, marinated cucumbers sure taste. Will. Oh, gotta get a cucumber. No words. <laughs> Seriously, this is my favorite salad ever. I've always loved this salad. And it's even better now that I've watched you use all of these super fresh ingredients. It's absolutely delicious. So you all get down here to Sunshine. What's the address? The address is 3102 Old Spanish Trail, Houston, Texas, 77054. And order this. <laughs> Bye. That was so much fun fun. Thanks again, Chef Arga, for allowing us into your space for the conversation. Make sure that you visit Sunshines and all of the other Black-owned vegan businesses as soon as you get a chance. There's Green Seed Vegan, Houston Sauce Co., Lindiana Southern Vegan Kitchen, Crumville, Texas, and Soul Food Vegan, just to name a few. Thank you all for tuning in. Join us next Tuesday at 7 p.m. for a staycation at the fabulous La Maison as we discuss self-care practices. See you next week on The Avenue.